New season and a new look Orange. While last year saw three top 10 victories for SU, the Orange missed the NCAA tournament, had a short run in the NIT, lost six of his top seven scorers, and lost its heir apparent to Jim Beheim's coaching job. But this could be a new year for the Orange coming up on Citrus TV's 2017 basketball preview show. Christian and I will take a look at additions and losses to the Orange roster, its upcoming schedule, and sit down with head coach Jim Beheim. Don't move a muscle. Citrus TV's basketball preview show begins right now. Hello and welcome to the Carmelo K. Anthony Basketball Center for this year's Citrus TV Basketball Preview Show. With Nicole Hansen, I'm Christian Guzman, and it will certainly be an interesting season for the Orange, Nicole. It certainly will be, Christian, with so many of the team's top players leaving, as well as an extremely young roster this year. It'll be interesting to see how Coach Jim Beheim deals with this whole new roster without his most prominent assistant coach. Well, before we look forward to the season at hand, let's look back at how the 2016-17 season played out. I thought we had, a, you know, we had a terrible start to our season. Uh, we put ourselves in a tremendous hole. You know, our defense is just not good right now. We're just not making the reads and covering the shooters. It's something we've always been able to do. Right now, we're just making too many mistakes. Things you just can't do in tough games. We're just not doing enough things right to win the game right now lost three games to teams outside the top 100. Certainly not the ending to the season Syracuse fans envisioned. Coming into this campaign, the Orange must move on without some key players from last year. One of those guys is sharpshooter Tyler Lydon. The Elizaville, New York native was selected by the Denver Nuggets 24th overall in the NBA draft. He averaged over 13 points per game and over 8.5 rebounds per game. And the grad transfers made a huge splash last season. Guards Andrew White and John Gillen played massive roles in the offense. White led the team in points, averaging over 18 points per game. Gillen averaged over 10 points per game, including some notable buzzer beaters against Duke and NC State. Both went undrafted in this year's NBA draft. And a surprise addition to this list is Torian Thompson. One of the star freshmen from last season showed promise offensively. He started 21 games last year and averaged over 9 points per contest. However, the New Jersey native left Syracuse at the beginning of the semester. He transferred to Seton Hall to be closer to his family. Well, the Orange may have lost some key players, but it does have some guys returning that will make a huge impact on the team this season. First breakout freshman Tyus Battle returns for his sophomore campaign. He was a constant presence throughout the season, averaging 11 points per game. He averaged over 17 points per game in the last seven contests. Battle is looking to take on a leadership role this season at the guard position. Another key player returning to the Orange this season is Frank Howard. The Maryland native looked primed to start the majority of games last year at point guard. However, he lost a starting job to John Gillen halfway through the season. Howard looks to hold on to the starting position outright this year. but will also look to improve on his scoring as he only averaged 4.5 points per game last season. Lastly, Pascal Chukwu is returning for his second season in Orange. The 7'2 center transferred from Providence after his freshman year and got to play his first time in Orange last season. Unfortunately, Chukwu only played seven games before he tore his retina and was out for the rest of the season. He only averaged 1.7 points per game. Chukwu is hoping to better utilize his height advantage in the front court this season. 
And someone we didn't mention is Matthew Moyer. The Ohio native took a redshirt year last season, and as Citrus TV's Matthew Weaselthay reports, Moyer is ready to play a key role for the Orange this year. Last year, Matthew Moyer had an exciting Orange Madness, but that was all the time on the court he would see. Moyer sat out the 2016-17 season with a toe injury. But now as a redshirt freshman, Moyer is in an interesting position. Being in his system for a year with this team that's being so young, you know, we'll have to lean on him. He's a leader. He's been thrust into that leader role just because of, you know, he is a sophomore, redshirt freshman, sophomore in the second year. Well, he's, he's benefited from being here for the year. He's in better condition. He's improved his shooting. Um, and, and uh, again, he's our most experienced forward. Experienced. Moyer is the only SU forward who has even practiced in the Syracuse system in the past year. Roster's clear, you know, got you know some new freshmen, and I'm considered a vet, <laughs> and I'm a redshirt freshman, so it's just crazy, you know, to come in from year, from you know from one year to the next year, and uh, I'm just you know I'll definitely have the opportunity to go out there and you know, show what I can do. For Moyer, though, this is not something to be afraid of. You no, know, it's exciting. I mean, that's that's a great thing about a program like Syracuse or the other programs. You know, you go in and it's. You know, you wait your turn. You wait your turn. Whoever's in front of you is going to be there until senior year, most likely, and you know that's that's the bottom line. But you know, just you know, being in a program like Syracuse, um, being one of the best you know college basketball programs in the country, and so you know, the opportunity is going to be there. The Orange lost Tyler Lydon and Andrew White last season, two leaders for Syracuse, but they may have another in the wings with Matthew Moyer. I'm Matthew Weasel there, Citrus TV. Thanks, Matthew. Well, coming up next, Christian and I take a look at some new additions to the Orange roster, and Christian will sit down with Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim. Don't change the channel. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to go out there to rain. Here get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, Oh yeah, yes! So much fun! Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry. For bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Welcome back inside the Mellow Center for the Citrus TV 2017 Basketball Preview Show. With Nicole Hansen, I'm Christian Guzman. Let's meet some of the new men who will suit up in orange this season. One of those guys is graduate transfer Geno Thorpe. He spent his undergrad years with Penn State and USF. Last season, Thorpe led the Bulls in scoring with just over 15 points per game. The Pittsburgh native also gives SU another three-point threat. He made 39 threes last year. Jim Beheim also added another threat to his front court. Marek Dolezaj joins the Orange from Slovakia, marking a different recruiting tactic for Beheim, who usually recruits international students who have played in the U.S. for at least a year. Dolezaj is a 6'9 freshman forward and can shoot anything from three-pointers to mid-range jumpers. He's likely a candidate to fill the role Tyler Lydon left in the Orange's 2-3 zone. And to back up Pascal Chuku, the Orange have big man Parama Sidibe waiting in the wings. The Newark, New Jersey native stands at 6'10 and is a defensive monster. Scouts love his rebounding ability, an area where Syracuse struggled in last season. Sidibe will sit in the center of the 2-3 zone and he takes the court in orange. Well, as we mentioned, Jim Beheim has quite a few international players on his roster this year who have played in the U.S. before coming to Syracuse. But one man in particular is a little bit different. Citrus TV reporter James Groh has more on the Orange's recruit who came right from Slovakia to central New York. 4,230 miles. That's how far freshman basketball recruit Marek Dolezaj had to travel to get to Syracuse. 
Dolezal is from Bratislava, Slovakia, and he's come to Syracuse to play basketball for the Orange. While 4,230 miles may seem like a long ways away, for Dolezal, it's nothing crazy. That is not hard because I was in Spain one year and this is like similar. And the Atlantic Ocean between North America and Europe is more than just a body of water. It symbolizes a difference in style of basketball. In Europe it's more about your brain. Uh... So if in Europe it's about your brain, in the US it's about your body. It's more physical, like in Europe. But if physicality is the name of the game, he might have some catching up to do. He is listed as being six foot nine and just 180 pounds. But Dolezal isn't worried about this change in style. I know it's difficult, but I need time to improve. He played in Spain for a season and also competed in a number of international tournaments across Europe. But when he got to Syracuse, he knew this is where he wanted to play. And when I came here for an um, official visit, I allowed that here. In his first experience playing a game in the Carrier Dome, he scored four points and registered one assist and four steals against Southern New Hampshire. James Grow, Citrus TV. So, you know, I, I think we've got a lot of, a lot of positives. I, I don't really see um, any big negatives with this group. Our defense was horrendous tonight. And he's, no, he's, he's 0 for 8. I didn't think he was going to make it. Do we care? Who cares? I don't care. When you go to the Final Four, last year was the fifth best year I've ever had here. Ever. Yeah, they took a poll and said Hillary Clinton was going to be president, too. <laughs> that didn't work out so good. Okay, thanks. Welcome back to the Citrus TV 2017 Basketball Preview Show. We're now joined by head coach Jim Beheim. Jim, thank you so much for joining us here. Good to be with you. Well, obviously the last year didn't get uh, off to the end of, end of season results you wanted to see, but what excites you most about this season? Well, I mean, obviously uh, we have a lot of young players and we got to be able to get them up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, we have a veteran backcourt, and I think that's something that we have to you know, hang our hats on for a while, and the younger guys in the front line are going to have to get up to speed. Uh, start, speaking of that veteran backcourt, you have Tyus Battle, who returns as your highest scorer from last year. What do you expect his role to be in this Orange squad? Well, you know, he's a scorer. That's what he does. He's an outstanding, outstanding scorer, and we need to make sure he gets in opportunities that he can take advantage of. Frank Howard's a veteran. He knows how to play our, our system our, in the point position. Uh, I like his experience. I like his improvement. Uh, we've had a Geno Thorpe back there, fifth year senior, knows how to play, and Howard Washington. So I, I like our guards. I think they're good. Um, they have to be ready to go right away. What also do you expect um, out of the veteran group of men to take the leadership position in the locker room? Well, you know, Frank Howard and Tyus Battle, they're, they're the two guys that really have to step it up and, and be there. The younger players are very familiar with them. They know them. They're getting to know Gino, but uh, they know those two guys, and they're guys that are going to have to step up. And our young guys, even though they're young, they have to take responsibility and, and become leaders in their own right uh, in terms of what doing what they need to do. Nobody's going to do it for them, so they have to work hard and figure out what they need to do to help us win. And with those four freshmen now that you have on your team, who do you expect to really step up and have kind of the year that like Tyus had, well, had last year? You know, it's hard to tell early in practice, but we expect these guys to be able to contribute and help us. And Matt Moyer, who's a red shirt uh, freshman, and we expect that he's ready to help us. And our two big guys, uh, you know, we think Pascal certainly has had some experience, uh, understands what we're doing. Uh, we think he's uh, going to have a great year. And kind of peeking into the future as well, in that 2018 class that's coming in, you have your son Buddy Beheim <laughs> on that on that class. What does that mean to you as a father to be able to coach your son at one of the highest levels of basketball? Well, he's worked hard and he's become a good player, so I'm happy to coach him. If he wasn't a good player, I wouldn't be looking. I wouldn't be coaching him. So he's a good player. I think we'll have a good recruiting class before all is said and done. And um, I think these guys we have this year are going to be good players. I think they're going to work hard. I think they're going to get better. Um, I like where we're positioned in terms of the future uh, 
for Syracuse basketball. Do you expect a friendly rivalry between him and Jimmy when, <laughs> whenever you guys play Cornell? I'm sure it will be. <laughs> well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us here on Citrus TV's Basketball Preview Show. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, and thank you, Coach Beheim. Coming up after the break, I sit down with one of the stars of the Orange. Plus, Christian and I will break down Syracuse's potential starting lineup. Don't move. Citrus TV's 2017 Basketball Preview Show will be back. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. that I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly, just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. You haven't even brought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Welcome back to the Citrus TV 2017 Basketball Preview Show with Nicole Hansen. I'm Christian Guzman, and as the season gets underway, visit our website, CitrusTV.com. You'll find game recaps for every Syracuse game this season, as well as all the sports on the hill. Plus, for up-to-date coverage for all your Syracuse basketball needs, check out Citrus TV Sports on social media, at Citrus TV Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Transfer players such as Andrew White and John Gielen proved to be instrumental to SU success last season. This year, another transfer player looks to make his mark in central New York. Citrus TV's Nick Dugan has more on the success of these players. Last season, Syracuse added graduate transfers Andrew White and John Gillen. White led the team with 18.5 points per game, while Gillen averaged double figures of his own and led the team in assists. And though their last game in Orange was a second-round NIT loss to Ole Miss, Jim Beheim realizes that the season could not have been the same without the two guards. I think they were very helpful for us. We wouldn't have won 19 games without those two guys last year. White and Gillen are gone now, but a new year has brought with it a new graduate transfer, all the way from Tampa, Florida. Gino Thorpe spent last season with the University of South Florida, where he averaged over 15 points and four assists for the Bulls, now, here at Syracuse, he's anxious to play on an ACC team at an ACC level, but knows that with it will come greater responsibility. I know they expect a lot from me just because I've, I've been in these situations before, and I'm just going to try to help the young guys as much as possible and do the best I can. With his experience and his leadership uh, and, and, and the will, you know, when you get fifth-year guys, you know, winning is important to them, and they understand that, and they bring that winning mentality. Described by Bayheim as a good shooter, strong driver, and physical defender, the Pittsburgh PA native has all the tools to follow the blueprint of fifth-year success laid out by White and Gillen last winter. But Thorpe doesn't see it that way. Well, I wouldn't say I'm trying to do something as similar. I'm just trying to be myself. Uh, I'm trying to be the best I can be, you know, to help the team uh, as much as possible. While Thorpe may miss some time with an ankle injury to start the year, when he returns, it is clear that he'll be forging his own path to help the Orange succeed this season. Nick Dugan, Citrus TV.
welcome back to Citrus TV's 2017 basketball preview show. We're here with Tyus Battle. Tyus, first off, you had a really consistent season last year, points wise, and really exploded towards the end of the season. How are you kind of carrying that momentum into this season as your playoff court? Um, well, I worked really hard over the summer. Uh, worked on every aspect of my game, scoring wise, defensively. Um, so going into this season, I just, I'm just going to try to be aggressive, uh, make plays that not necessarily to score the ball all the time, but um, draw defenses, get my teammates involved, and uh, make things happen. Speaking of your teammates, a lot of the more experienced guys leading last year, either from graduation or the draft, Coach Beheim even mentioning you as kind of a leader on this team moving forward. How are you kind of embracing that role, both on the court moving forward and off the court? Um, I've definitely embraced it. Um, I think last year I was more of a leader by example, uh, per se. Uh, but this year I have to be more vocal. Um, the guys come to me when they're when they're uh, when, it, when they need advice, stuff, things like that. You know, there's a lot of the, a lot of their first years playing college basketball, and I'm just there to uh, provide advice and hints to uh, get them through the season and get through over the humps throughout the season. Now looking back to last season, the postseason, maybe a little bit of a different ending than some fans might have thought or yeah. expected. How are you guys kind of taking, uh, how are you guys kind of viewing last season and taking that attitude and the, idea, uh, the mentality you guys had then and putting use it as motivation into this season? Um, well, it definitely hurt. It hurt all of us. Um, so we definitely took that as a chip on our shoulder. Um, and I know people are trying to perceive us as kind of down this year, stuff like that. But that's all motivation for us, uh, just to go out there and prove people wrong. And now you had mentioned a lot of younger uh, younger players or a couple of transfer players their first year here in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. How are a lot of the veteran players kind of, you mentioned some advice, kind of taking them under their wing and helping them with the 2-3 well, zone, kind of like a new system that they might be not familiar with, or just off the court? Um, you know, just always being there for them, uh, checking in on them, seeing how they're doing, how they're just in the college. You know, being a college student is just completely different from coming from high school. So. Uh, um, just always being there for them, uh, especially that time over the summer. Got to know them really well. Uh, always hung out, not just on the court, but off the court when bowling, saw movies, stuff like that. So just getting to know them at a personal level is how you do it. What do you think is the biggest difference between the team this year versus the team last year? Um, I mean, I think this year the guys, the guys really get after it. Uh, they play hard all the time, defensively and offensively. And I think we all have a chip on our shoulders this year. Um, so uh, I think we're, it's going to be a fun year. We're going to surprise a lot of people, and, and uh, we'll definitely be ready. Lastly, looking forward to this season, you guys had a couple big upsets last year, Florida State, Duke, mm -hmm. Virginia. How are you guys kind of preparing yourselves for, for the difficult ACC play, the difficult even non-conference schedule ahead, and trying to get some of those big upsets again? Um, just follow the system, uh, play hard all the time. You know, Roster-wise, we might not be like we were the past couple of years, but uh, that, that, we just have to play hard every, every, uh, every possession and every play. And, uh, you know, we have Kansas pretty early on, early on in the season, so that'll be a great test for us and uh, coming to ACC play. All right, great. Thank yep. you so much. Thank Thanks you. for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. So how will the Orange line up this season? In the backcourt, it looks like a familiar pairing gets the call to lead the Orange. Frank Howard and Tyus Battle are the most likely options to start at the guard positions for SU. The duo started five games together last season. Both men are the only returning members for Syracuse to average over 16 minutes per game last year. And the Orange have plenty of options down low. Expect to see Pascal Truglu as the main big man. And O'Shea Brissett is likely to see starting time with Geno Thorpe still out with an ankle injury. Matthew Moyer will likely round out the starting lineup with Barama Sidibe waiting to come off the bench if the team needs. Coming up, we'll take a look at SU's upcoming schedule and our friends at Q's Countdown take a further dive into this year's Orange squad. Citrus TV's basketball preview show will be right back. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. 
Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Welcome back to the Mellow Center for Citrus TV's 2017 basketball preview show. As Syracuse nears the start of its 2017-2018 campaign, let's take a look at the Orange's schedule starting with its non-conference opponents. Coach Jim Beheim will welcome son Jimmy Beheim's Cornell team to the Carrier Dome for its first game of the season. Maryland will also visit the Dome for the Big Ten ACC Challenge before SU travels to Miami to take on powerhouse Kansas. There's also a couple Big East matchups for longtime fans, including a game at Madison Square Garden against UConn and a trip to D.C. to play rival Georgetown. The Orange kickoff ACC play before the new year with a home contest versus Virginia Tech. The first big test comes on January 6th as Notre Dame comes to the dome. Last time the Irish were in central New York, Trevor Cooney dropped 22 points. It all leads up to a gruesome February that includes road matchups against Louisville, Miami, and Duke. Remember, the Blue Devils were named the number one team in the nation in the preseason coaches poll. The marquee home matchup in February is a tangle with the Tar Heels of North Carolina on February 21st. Now let's send it back to the Citrus TV studios where the Q's countdown crew will make some predictions about where Coach Bayheim's squad will end this season. All right, thanks guys. Tyler Aki here with Chris Venzen and Jonathan Hoppy. And guys, let's get right to it. The Orange graduated four starters from last year's team. That leaves Tyus Battle as the only returning member of Jim Bayheim's first five. So first, will it be a newcomer that makes the biggest impact on this team or a more established guy like Battle? I think it's going to be freshman newcomer Baramba Sidibe. Right now he's not listed as a starter, but he comes in as a 6'10", wiry, athletic, elite shot blocker for the Orange. That position is extremely important right in the middle of the zone for Syracuse. Uh, right now, Pascal Chukwu mans that post, but I think that his defensive potential is too much to keep off the floor. I'd be shocked if he didn't get rotational minutes at the least, if not the starter by the end of the season. For me, the most important position is the point guard, and that's why Frank Howard's going to be the guy that makes the biggest impact. Last season, he was really bad. And John Gillen's not on this roster anymore. Howard's going to have to be the point guard. And with a team that doesn't have a lot of natural scores, he's really going to have to distribute the ball and do a good job of spreading it around and getting his team going. He's the biggest guy, in my opinion. Now, moving along, media polls say Syracuse is going to finish at 10th in the ACC. Jonathan, I'll start with you. Too high, too low, or just right? I think it's too low. I'm pretty in on this Syracuse basketball team because I think the defense is going to be really good. Last year, there were a lot of expectations for this team, and this year, there's not so much. In fact, there's a pretty big chip on their shoulder after missing the tournament last year. I think the 2-3 is going to be more than solid and enough to do pretty good, better than 10th. I think that's a little low. I agree with you. The defense is going to be good. They have a lot of very athletic, long defenders, and that plays very well into Syracuse's zone. However, they're going to struggle on the offensive side of the ball. A lot of one-dimensional athletes on this team. I think the 10th is just about right. You look at Duke, they're the odds-on favor to win this thing. North Carolina, Notre Dame, they're in the mix too. I think 10th should be good. Now, last one for you guys. Last season's NIT berth. Clearly a disappointment to say the least for this team. Does the Orange avenge that and get into the big dance this year? Chris, I'll start with you. I do not think they do it. I think it's going to be tough to replace 70% of your offense. Syracuse is really going to miss John Gillen, Andrew White the third, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Yes, the defense is going to be good, but not good enough. I don't, I don't really see how you can expect this team to improve after you take away so much offensive firepower. I disagree, Chris. Book your plans now. Syracuse is going dancing. When you look at it, you don't have to be a great team to make the NCAA tournament. You just have to get hot at the right time. I think they can do that and possibly get their first win ever in the ACC tournament. All right, good stuff, guys. Let's go back to the house that Mello built with Christian de Guzman. Thank you very much, guys. Well, Nicole, that just about does it for us here in the Mellow Center. What are you most excited for this upcoming season? I'm most excited to see what Coach Beheim does with such a young roster to be able to see if they're able to pull out some postseason runs, some big ACC upset wins. See, basically just see what he does with this young team. Should be an exciting season, no doubt about it. Well, that's all from us. Thank you so much for watching the Citrus TV 2017 Basketball Preview Show. For Nicole and the entire Citrus TV crew, enjoy the season, Orange Nation.